Here's my little sister's laptop. It is a Dell 17 5000 series. I'm pretty sure it's a Core i3, and that's about all I really know about this computer. So the story goes that my nephew was running around playing and stepped on this computer. And uh, as you can assume, some damage occurred. And that damage is what I'm going to try and fix today. Oop. So, as you can see, it probably needs a new screen, which is pretty well cracked. I'm not too sure if there's any internal damage, but I'm going to take this thing apart and find out what's going on. Let's see what it is. Yep, Inspiron 17, 5000 series, Waves Max Audio HD True Life Panel, Wireless Bluetooth, HDMI Dropbox, and 17.3 inch display. Yep, seems like your standard computer. Uh, this one's not running Windows 7, it's actually running Windows 10, and it has a Core i3, so it's pretty old. See just how bad, like the whole panel is pretty much cracked from one end to the other. I'm kind of impressed my nephew did this much damage. Okay, let's get started. One is to flip this computer over and pull the battery out. Okay, it's a tiny battery for such a big computer. Next is to pull out all the visible screws. Next is to take this one out. Next is let me pull the optical drive out of here. So there's the optical drive out. And I have to continue taking out more screws. Next is to pull this bottom cover off. Now that I've taken the two screws off. Right here, the hard drive in. When removing the hard drive, don't use the pull tab. You're much better off just digging your fingers into it and removing it that way. The fuck? Okay, so the hard drive is out. It is a tiny little 500 gigabyte hard drive. Next step is to take off these little antennas for the Wi-Fi. Pop it off with this little clip. Just holding it in. There's that. Next is the sodium RAM card right there. It's kind of weird seeing a computer that only has one stick of RAM. Let's remove the keyboard. You want to use something plastic, but see, it's about the time. I'm using this uh, pair of tweezers that I bent out. Next step is to very carefully lift this up and disconnect this ribbon cable. Now this keyboard doesn't have the backlight, and I do want to install this computer, or do a couple small upgrades to it to make it better, and one of those is going to be installing a backlight. I'm going to keep this keyboard as a backup, and uh, install a backlit keyboard when I give it back to her. Gently pull that up real quick. There's that one. One last cable. Right here. You want to use something plastic to pry apart the palm rest on the lower half of the case. In my case I didn't have that so I had to use a pair of tweezers that I unbent up. I also forgot that there were some screws that I left in the bottom of the computer so I had to go back and take those out.
Next is to remove the hinge screws so that we can remove the screen from the lower half. Carefully remove the 30 pin video cable and fish the Wi Fi antenna out. I am stripping the computer down to its individual components so that I can clean it before I reassemble it. Separate the screen housing. This can be easily done by using your fingers to just pry the plastic clips apart. Remove the screws that hold the screen panel itself from the actual shell of the screen case. I don't know what these are actually called, I'm just making up names. Once all the screws are out, remove the 30 pin video cable from the back of the screen and also remove the ribbon cable from the camera. Be very careful before you remove the screen from the actual casing as to not damage the cable. Remove the cables before you take the screen off all the way. Now thanks to the magic of YouTube video editing, or my own video editing, I now have the replacement screen which has been ordered online. I'll have the link down below in case anyone actually needs help finding this particular screen. Again, before you use the screen that I provide the link for down below, make sure you double check the model number of your screen, make sure it's the right one. Here's the old screen, here's the new screen. Now step one is going to be to transplant these hinges onto the new screen. Next is to put the screen assembly back together. Before placing the screen back on the back plate, first connect the wires that go to the webcam and the 30 pin cable from earlier. Next, place the screen back on the back plate and carefully route the cables and Wi-Fi antennas down to the lower part of the screen where they should be. Make sure that they don't get in the way of anything or the operation of the case. Next, screw the screen down to the back plate. Once the screen is secure, remove the protective film and place the bezel back on. It just clips back into place.
So now the top part is out of the way and it's back to being one piece. We'll start work on these smaller bottom bits and a few other things. So I've already pulled that logic board, cleaned it up, and now I'm going to put it all back together. The lower half is like a puzzle. Just place the things where they go. Make sure everything is plugged in and then screw it all back together. Now one thing to note when you're putting the screws back in to the motherboard and all that, you want to make sure you don't put any screws that go into the holes that are visible on this side. So if you can see straight through the computer, you don't put a screw there. Only put the screws into the captive ones. See, like this one goes straight through, so don't put a screw there. This one also goes straight through, so no screw there. Straight through here, so no screw. And so on and so forth. You can figure out the rest. You also want to match up with the palm rest to make sure you're not filling in any of these screws. A little too early ish. Next, reattach the upper half. And take extra care when plugging in the screen. Also, I'll route the Wi-Fi antenna cables into the correct location that they were in earlier. Once all the screws that should be screwed in at this stage are in, it's time to place the palm rust on. Connect the ribbon cables for the mouse and the power button, then fasten the clips around the outside and screw the palm rest in. Now it's time to install the backlit keyboard that I got off Amazon. I'll place the links down below for that as well. Simply install the ribbon cable like you did on the last keyboard, but this time there's a second ribbon cable for the backlight. Once those are all installed, just clip the keyboard back into place. And finally, install the upgraded 8GB stick of RAM.
turns on. That's not good. Let's give it a second to boot. Oh, there it is. Voila! It's got its backlit keyboard now. Windows logo is booting up. God damn, I am good. I'd like to point out the backlighting on this keyboard is pretty spotty. Like, tab is much dimly lit than shift. Backspace again is much dimly lit than this key next to it. It's not that well done, to be honest. But it's better than not having it at all. Yep, computer is back online. So if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, like, fixing computer videos, Hackintosh videos, car videos, uh, whatever else, hit subscribe. And that's about it, guys. Have a good one. Do whatever you do on the internet. Bye-bye.